Well, that's what I mean. I mean, John's John's route through the tournament has, has been really tough. It started with Morgan McInnes, and it, it just didn't get any easier for him. And here he is in the last 16 against our fan dad. Just mention the uh, the other ties in the in the round as well because there's, there's some really really good ones we'll see next on the mainstream table Jess Graham against Sean Sharkey we've got pretty long odds on that being a last 16 tie at the start of the competition but both have had some fantastic results over the last couple of days Cal Cove on his first pro series tournament has made the last 16 as well he'll take on Aaron Davies and uh, Josh Kane and Carl Sutton are the other two safely in the hat at the moment. And we're going to wait for some other results to come through in the last 32 to find out who they will play. And so you're in the last 32. The Greg Batten 6-4 up on Cleve Thompson. Christoph Lambert 5-3 up on Hitton Patel. Chris Caulfield's on the hill against Dave McNamara. Craig Waddingham 4-3 up on Cormac Kerr and Jimmy Croxon and Rob Warren have just broken off. Still to play in that round. We've got Brian Halco, Dom Cooney, Phil Harrison, Connor Jones and Chris Day. Phil Parkin, you are up to date. And John's going to come to the table first here and with a very, very presentable opportunity. Yeah, I found that the break really, really well. He'd be disappointed that he didn't get a ball. He had a lot of, a lot of sweat um, mid-break for a ball going in, but unfortunately no joy for him. It's just the start of the John would like, though, very open table. Well, I, what really caught the eye this morning, actually, was John's win over Dylan Leary. I mean, any time you can beat Dylan 7-1, yeah. you, 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 you're on a pretty good track. And he's beaten Morgan McInnes in a prelim. He beat Sean Chipperfield 7-3 in the last 64. Yeah, I mean, he's had draw. an unbelievable draw to get to this draw, stage. Yeah. Like I said, even the... The match with Dylan, I'm, I'm pretty certain, I'd, because my brother was playing early doors, I'd come in. I'm pretty sure that Dylan was 1 0 up, and <laughs> a, a matter of like 45 minutes later, th the table was getting brushed for the next game, and I've, I've had to check the results. I thought, what's happened here? I yeah, thought, was there I, a problem? Yeah, yeah something, <laughs> something happened here. No, 7 1. He's landed a bit awkward on his last, the, the previous shot, which means he's had to reroute a good bit here. Um, I mean, it's probably closer to the order he would have been playing. He would have been leave, uh, trying to get rid of the the ball that's near the block, sort of near the end of the frame, um, off this one on the right hand side. But yeah, it's, it's gone off. To, oh, he's played this quite well. That's a oh, really good I'll shot. Tell you what, he's played a shot there, Mark. Didn't even look on that shot. I, th I, th I thought he would have to revisit this one, but that's yeah, that's a really good shot. It was going to be a huge problem, I think, if he didn't connect these yeah. two if he, ha if he had to play the one down the table to land on the one nearest the eight ball it was going to be so so difficult yeah. it almost feels like he's taking his medicine a little bit there but I what's think the that's shot he's played I think that's where you could tell when John's um, feeling good or playing well is he didn't really he didn't sort of you know stand and give it sort of the facial expressions and <laughs> he, he didn't grimace or he just thought he just got on with it he thought well, do you know what I'm good enough to read it here I'll just I'll, I'll get on with it and go another way yeah he looks to be in really good shape this weekend as does John he's been a busy busy boy at the start of 2024 as well he's been playing a little bit of everything yeah even even attends the salt air events up in Scotland as well himself um, he comes up um, and I think he's playing the nine ball as well up in, yeah, in Scotland a little bit this, though, just as we're bigging him up <laughs> so he'll be really annoyed there he's got another three or four foot to play with there because he can keep going off the top cushion and back down yeah there's nothing for short there but there's, yeah, he, he could have overhit that by six feet and probably just about still been okay. Yep. Tough shot now. That's an unbelievable call. Yeah. I, I didn't even look on on our... No, you, you, you yeah. look for the main camera and I thought, this might not even cut. Is he yeah. going to have to go Christian first? But in the end, it, he's floated it in. Yeah, so it was easier than I thought, yeah. think we thought. Yeah, I mean, offense from he, he's one of those who's got both breaks, right? Yeah, I but think his, his front ball break, I think, because uh, he, he has a, a, a hand on the table front ball break as well, yeah. doesn't he? Where he? He's got all the tools, basically. Yeah. Right? I tell you what, John's been a bit unlucky there because he's hit that break, an absolute dream. And just look where the eight ball's gone. Yeah, last ball trickling, isn't it, really? It's just went down to safety. Can't hit the break much better than that if you're John McAllister. Yeah, it was parked in the middle of the table too until it got a couple of unfortunate kisses. Is he going to force him to take reds here? Uh, looks like yeah, it. probably because of the yellow sort of top left that's nearest the red. That doesn't look like it goes past that red either. Um, and obviously, if he's able to get the the red that's sort of just above where John's name is um, on the scoreboard, he can he can maybe play the can. And now, assuming the block obviously isn't 
tracking towards. I'm just going to put a table first here. To be fair, yeah, you can just leave the like a delicate cannon to a few shots down. Yeah, I think you could you could genuinely make a case that even though the eight ball and that red are tied up, you might even say the red at the top of the table is probably John's most awkward ball. You'd expect with the traffic that he's got around that red and eight ball that he should be able to figure that out, really. Yeah, I think I would probably opt for... Yeah, well, he's going to play this in. I think I'd want there to be a couple of options left after the after the cannon, just in case you aren't on yeah. the one that you're obviously trying to promote. Yeah, and I think whichever way, even if he gets the the left side of the red or the right yeah. side of the red, he's, he's got he's an option got on that option, side yeah, of the correct, table. Yeah. Because that yellow is, plays a bit big off this off this one with the cue ball. Mm -hmm. You must be pretty happy with the where the eight ball's going after us. Yeah, straight yeah, into the right. cushion, and that's come out okay. Looks like the red still passes to the bottom left. Yeah, he has to play a good shot here um, to get the cue ball good. I don't know how how comfortably the red top left goes from this side. He would be, he'd love to play it now, but I'm guessing he'll have to play the right middle first, yeah. Yeah, so, even though the frames have looked pretty straightforward, he's had to reroute a couple of times now, and this has to go a little. Yeah, he's... Well, I can't tell if he's a bit short here, depending on what he was playing, but it looks like it. Yeah, I think he either had to get a little bit more side on it so he was on the top left first or a bit more pace so he was on the bottom right more comfortably yeah, so he's still just about on this again this just tells me he's feeling pretty confident because he's not sort of not on a go or is a personal light relief and it's n nothing personal towards John but it's always nice to see those not going yeah <laughs> So you don't have to defend it. Yeah. Well, not so much that. It's just you know these the cloth is brand new this weekend, and I've seen a couple over the course of the weekend. You're thinking, ah, that's not going to go in in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting. I actually feel like Harfun's really good in these because he plays all sorts of disciplines. I feel like he's really good in the tactical situations. He'll have a couple of options in his head here of what he could possibly play—a loss of turn or a an attacking option or it looks like he's going to play a loss of turn here and try and leave the cue ball near the left middle snooker, possibly. it looks like he's lining up it's uh, maybe, well maybe he can leave it yeah unless he can play the yellow that's on the top rail and stun it no he's playing this one he, he might play this two ways and try and make both yeah he must be confident that you can't leave the pot from this angle but it does look on our well I don't think it passes pass the eight ball yeah. for a start yeah okay yeah Maybe. I think John will give us a good little look, though. To see if he, if he can drop it in, he'll still be on the black. Because he can play it sort of pocket weight and hope it does drop. I don't think I'd have been happy leaving this for his half, I feel like John's good enough to just trickle us by. Yeah. Oh, I flew in. Yeah, easily. That's what I didn't really, didn't really like that option from our fan. And I don't think John really even... He has got such a good cut break. Yeah, block. Eight ball was tracking the first round as well, top right. He'd have loved that eight ball to fall in because this is a slightly tricky yeah, layout now. Yeah, because uh, both colour sets have sort of congregated up there, haven't they? I think a yellow goes up right near the end. I love the yeah. way he's, uh, he's manufactured the bridge hand on that cut break to sort of spider his way over the pocket and get a really smooth key. Yeah, I think that's the, the most uncomfortable. I, I'm not much of a cut breaker myself, but I do utilise it sometimes, but that's the what I base it on of where I where I would like to break from is where my hand's most comfortable but I think he just he tries to see as much of the ball he's wanting to hit yeah he goes the other way doesn't yeah, he and he works his hand yeah, around that basically yeah yeah so he's just working with the fact that the reds are just impossible here so he's just going to try and I think get his yellow out of danger I'd imagine here yeah. bounce it over the left middle perhaps so. this is a shot he's just got to get it out now before yeah. before John messes about too much with it and has the chance to. We saw a frame really similar to this yesterday with Jess Graham and Tom Cousins and it ended up being a bit of a bit of trench warfare and that the main reason was because the player in our fans position there didn't take the chance to get the yellow out early. Mm -hmm. John has now got a horrible situation here and 
probably suggest his best route is possibly playing for a re -rack. Yeah, I think he's struggling on all fronts here, really. I think that he's, it's impossible to get the red out. It's hard to get the red covering the eight ball, I'm not really sure. But he'll have to just bide his time for now and maybe work up a plan. Arfan's not really one of these players, even though he sort of he's maybe made a, an error, he's had an error of judgment in that first round, it doesn't really affect him whatsoever. I don't think he, he's not tempestuous, he doesn't really let anything sort of get to him, he's speed around the block, he, do you know what I mean? he knows how to deal with these situations, like he's not, he won't panic or he won't be annoyed, that'll be gone. That'll yeah, be back his mind now. I, th I think generally Arfan's really mentally strong in that yeah, sense. Yeah, he is, he's, definitely. He, he can have the odd, you know melt down under the shot clock pressure and mm. you know that but that happens to everybody that's not a personality trait so to speak i think generally he's, he's a very very solid player and he's also he's he's got something that's quite valuable in in this game he's, he seems to have one of those almost goldfish memories where he makes a mistake yeah. in say frame one and by frame two it's, it's already gone out of his mind yeah i think that i don't think it's going to make any difference to to him in this match, I just think the only difference is numerically. Do you know what I mean? Two 0 instead of one all. That's what he sees it as. Do you know what I mean? But he, he just takes a takes another chance and forgets about the friend at all. Yeah, so John's trying to get closer to this so he can maybe. Yeah, can he maybe? It looked like he tried really. to play into it. Yeah, maybe, but it's hard to tell if he can ever get this sort of a little by the. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the eight ball looks very far in the pocket, so. He's obviously trying to get it wedged in there so he can maybe perhaps get it passed, but he's only going to get sort of one or two chances at that. You see, that still doesn't look like it passes, but again, it's just giving our fan more time to. Do you know what I mean? He has a little free stab at the finish, I would imagine, again, if this doesn't pass. Yeah, free stab at the finish, but he has to get them now because I think, I think John can probably do a bit more with that. Yeah, it looks. it definitely looks. More possible, more. I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> hard to tell. It is, yeah, it is actually hard, yeah. Look like he keyed that one really nicely there, off him. He just overcut yeah, it a he little was bit. Mindful of blocking the one in the bottom half of the table, I'd imagine there. But we'll probably be able to tell from here if John looks a bit more interested in this. And cut back on the one to the right centre. Yeah. I was going to say, he'll probably go near that yellow, so then he would yeah, be able like to plant that. these if this does go. I mean, he, he's sort of in the position now where he, he kind of has to just go with the yeah go with the fact that he, it has to go. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he thinks he doesn't have many options left. He's he, played to try and wedge it in. He has to go. He was massive second favourite when he came to the table in this yeah. He's in a better position now than he was. Yeah, definitely. But he's still, he's still short-handed. Yeah, he's still got to like, go I for it. I think this looks like it has to jump past. Well, do you know what I mean? Like that's still well, that's not the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. That's it. John McAllister now very much in this frame, and he wasn't at all in it. Yeah. When the balls came out, and that is the sign of some good work. The what plays quite big here is the red that's sort of nearest the top right pocket. Yes. That now plays big because he he can't play an easy short position on the block. He needs to get back in behind the eight ball if he's going to finish and it. And the thing is, Arfan has to go. He, he's, yeah. he's got no nowhere to hide on the table now, so he's got to get out of here, and he has to find a way to land that cue ball somewhere where those two reds are to have any chance of putting the eight ball. Yeah. And that is a, a small window and not easy connections either. Yeah, it was pretty clever by John actually because his last shot when he tried to jam in, a lot of people would think that the harder you play it, the more chance it is of going by. Oh, I, 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 th I think he's played this frame beautifully. Yeah, but the harder he played it, the more the eight ball would have came out. It would have been yeah. more accessible for our fan though, whereas he's sort of left it tricky. I really do think John has played this frame so perfectly. He may well lose it, yeah. but he couldn't have done any more. See, if, unless he's gone twice across, Arfan's going to have to play for a play for a double here, you would imagine. I don't know if he's looked to play a lost turn combo sort of shot there, or if he's going to screw down the middle of the table. Yeah, he is, yeah. Oh, he's gone too far. Well, that red Makes looks a quite away. Yeah, it looks quite to the left as well. But he's, he's happy with it, so... At least he's probably thinking if he if he gets it in front of that red quite far in the pocket he's still favourite but he's played on the ball. Oh what a shot. Yeah, I actually did think that he was going on the fact that the obviously if there's a ball alongside the other ball, 
and Christy Caulfield awaiting their opponents. Yeah, just missed that result. Christy Caulfield beating Dave McNamara 7-3. Yeah. So how about this one for you, Mark? We've got the last 16 of Pro Series 1 for 2024. And we have one, two, three of the... Uh, of the nine or so players who've made it through so far who came up from the Challenger Series last season. Who have we got there? We've got so we've got Carl Cope, Sean Sharkey and Christy Caulfield. Yeah. Are there other, other possibilities of any other ties? I or? think those are the last ones still in. Possibly. Yes, yeah. yeah. But it was I mean, a funny old day yesterday the result was, wasn't it? It's was brilliant to see though, it is really good. Um, fantastic to watch. Because it would, it, uh, there would have been so many players getting up this morning thinking, do you know what? A couple of wins away from being right in the nitty gritty and my chance of winning my first sort of title here. So, yeah, I and mean, as you know, I'm I'm completely neutral when I come to these weekends. I'm just hoping to watch some good pool. But yeah. if there's one thing I do like more than anything else, it's a player breaking through and winning their yeah, first of course, title. Yeah, it, it's it's such an incredible feeling. And the thing is, the three guys you mentioned there are all top players who belong in the pro section, but to come in the first tournament and, and again like I said I mean you've got guys like Morgan and other guys who will fancy their chances but you don't get given you don't get given results so you can play really well and not get a result for do you know what I mean several events yeah so yeah these guys, these guys being in the last 16 already will be yeah they'll be, be forgiven for thinking oh what's, what's all the fuss about yeah I know <laughs> I'm sure there's a few players in your shoes thinking, what are these That's lads coming yeah. up and yeah, sailing is, through yeah. the last 16 all about? I sort of felt like that last year. Like I'd, 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 Over the the course of the year, I actually had a really good season. Um, but I could easily, you, can, you could easily have had the polar opposite. You could have had guys playing just as well as you, just it just not quite happening. And yeah. Thinking, sort of, I'm feeling a bit demoralised. But no, you'd like us, kind of what I'd said earlier on, the phrase I'd use was, you just have to roll with the punches. You just have to, you know, accept it, that sometimes it's not going to be your weekend. Yeah, and, and sometimes you, you can only control what you as a yeah, player yeah. can control because I, I, sometimes it's just about, you know, divine timing. Because if, if you have, because no one can play well for nine matches straight. I yeah. mean, it happens so rarely. But generally speaking, even we talked about earlier myself and Simon when Tom Cousins was winning all of his titles almost in every single tournament you can point to one match where he's not played very well yeah. at all but he's just got away with one mm -hmm. and you always need a bit of run to win these tournaments we I say I mean the prime example would be and I never watched the match but I, I watched them, a match that followed it and heard the commentary from Scott Gillespie a Phil Harrison versus Callum Singleton oh. yesterday I'm pretty sure that Callum Singleton didn't do a single thing wrong. No. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain it to family, friends, sponsors. Do you know what I mean? It's just pool. It's, uh, that's the most commonly used frame after yeah. during these weekends is it's just pool. So I found back on the break. Yeah, it was a really good break again. Wasn't it just? We just saw a, a really meticulous break and run from John McAllister. Yeah. Who looks very, very sharp. Yeah, he does look this afternoon. Sharp, Our fans going to have to go well to go with him here. Yeah. That, and that's exactly what he's going to feel like just now. He's just going to feel like one frame at a time and stay with him because I don't think John looks like he's going to falter right now. I don't know how easy it is to solve that red. It's sort of tied up, bottom left. I think if he plays the, the plant here first ball, he'll have a ball to play a cannon off of. He's put it quite firm, actually. Yeah, surprised he played that that quickly. Yeah, I thought he would leave it. He would leave that red closer to the left. Almost where the last one was. Yeah, pretty much just to yeah. sort of as a guaranteed. Can I mean, I mean, he's very. He's got a lot of options to to cannon out still, but it would have been nice to have one that was sort of tailor made for the cannon. He's going to play the cannon here, or is he just going to drop low? Looks like he's position? playing low on it. So yeah, there's the cannon. Yes. Oh, what? look at the action he's on. Oh my word! I can't even. I, um, it's, it's physics, but yeah, he can't work out either. <laughs> Not sure how he's managed to. Well, I thought he'd be coming that. cushion first into this. Yeah, bottom cushion. I think he maybe yeah. thought it was going to slide, but look at how has he messed that red on the way back there? I don't think you could quite believe that. Yeah, I mean, just, if anything, it shows you how good a curious that off fan is that he's, yeah. he's put so much screw on the ball there. But yeah, I'm I'm thinking there a little soft screw off the bottom cushion and sort yeah. of naturally tracks across. Either that or leave. Um, I don't know how easy it would have been, but leave the one that's o that's closer to the bottom rail just now to sort of top into that one. But I think. I think you had to attack it. Again, what I said earlier, leave yourself plenty of options. Yeah, I don't think attacking it was necessarily the worst thing. He's obviously he's obviously decided that playing it with a lot of screw and going direct was the best That's the best route. Best shot ever, like. I think it's okay, you know. He's he, yeah, he's okay. I think he I think he tried to he didn't actually want to 
to play it. I think he wanted to nudge it more outwards so it did go by the red. Um, I don't know if I would have played for it short like it seems like he's going to have to play. Again, I might just be... He's maybe just overrun it a tiny bit. Yeah, I, I He's completely fine, though, yeah, but I don't, I don't know if what, what, which he'd played for it with the two. He just missed it, though. And that has a major lot of for him because... Yeah, isn't it just... Not just numerically going, f if it would have been 4-1 down, he would also have been annoyed that that was a golden chance and he'd sort of let it slip, but... Yeah, those are a bit tricky for John. I, I do think that was his intention, was to mm -hmm. was to play the yeah, other one. Yeah, could be right, yeah, and he's just maybe overran it a little bit and left it awkward. It looked like that, because you just look at the cue ball and you think, well, what else yeah, is he... Is hard fun on this red? I don't know if he is, is he going to he? play? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I assumed he was. You had a quick look at it to see... Uh, yeah, he's well. OK. Yeah, he's OK, I think. Also, a pool commentator, hey. And Cormac Kurt has won the Hill Hill Decider against Craig Waring. A massive win that for the That's Irishman. 7-6 victory for him. Yeah, it seems like pretty much every event. I mean, obviously you get it with a lot of players, but Cormac is a bit like Cole. He seems to have one big player almost every single event, and he seems to get a good result against most of them. Well, yeah, Cole's sort of self-identifying as the legend killer is... Uh, yeah, he had some, some <laughs> results last year, didn't he? Yeah, didn't he just... But it's it's absolutely amazing. We've got let's have a look, four, six, eight, yeah, what, ten. What, what seedings do we? Oh, we, we, we we've, right, huh? we've got twelve players in the last sixteen. Four still to come, and the lowest ranked player is Christoph Lambert, and he's ranked fourteen. That's insane. No one in the top ten is currently in the last sixteen as our fan mops those up. But like you say, that is. I mean, so and the only player who is in the top ten who can still make the last sixteen is Phil Harrison. Does, do, you th do you sense that little buzz go around the players where you're thinking, because everyone's human, and all of a sudden they look at the yeah. look at who's left in the tournament and they go, oh, hello. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it could happen even as, er like I say, even as early as this morning. Like, I feel like I'm pretty sure that, um, so Ryan was playing Jez Graham, and I'm fairly certain the winner of the two played... Oh, Sean Sharkey, Sean Jez Sharkey, now, yeah. Yeah, so Sean Sharkey or Eddie Barker. So the four of them are looking, thinking... I mean, it's not, they're not being disrespectful to one another, but they're thinking, this is a great chance here, this is a very good chance, and they're not being defeatist, thinking, oh, if I'm playing a top player, I can't win, but they're also looking, thinking, Trump, this is great, like, if I keep playing my stuff, I've got every sort of chance of going really deep here. Yeah, I don't think anyone in the Pro Series thinks they can't win any yeah. match that's on the Pro Series, but there's definitely kind of draws, mm -hmm. and there's definitely draws which will put you in a slightly different mindset. Yeah. And it's it's the best players who have the same mindset for every player. That's that's I think one of the yeah, big of course, yeah. the, the big differences. You know, I, I I think consistency is is the biggest thing that separates the best from the rest, so yeah. to speak. But I think mindset is the other thing as well. Like I think the biggest sort of I don't know, relief or will be for the guys who have just sort of stepped up who are still in it, is they automatically hands down they feel like they belong straight away they don't feel like do you know what I mean that they just want that first sort of win or run under their belt so they feel like do you know oh this is going to be a tough season do you know like so they feel straight away right that's fine I belong I could build on this like that was a, it's, a, it's a massive thing if you get off on the right foot and John McAllister is yeah. continuing his sort of run of breaking really well and, yeah, he's just and mopping up really well tidy finishes this is another very straightforward finish for him again he's just made it look easy again yeah, the only thing he's got to be wary of here is he would love to be as straight as possible on exactly, this red to yeah. the bottom left. Yeah, he wants to put this thin rather than the white drop in the cushion a little bit. That's fine there, yeah. Yeah. If anything, on that side of it was better than on the other side of it, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, didn't want to be going anywhere near that yellow at yep. all. So that's come out nicely for him. And another lovely pattern picked by John McCallis. So yeah. He's a lovely player to watch. I Again, love watching no, our John. Our fans just doing what he can and just hold, just sort of on his coattails, and that's, that's all he can do really just now until he. This is for John for another one from his break, isn't it? So it certainly is. He's digging into this a little just to make sure he doesn't track anywhere towards the bottom right. Oh, he's fine, yeah. A lot of the players can do it, but I just mean time-wise, like they can make they can turn it around so swiftly. And well, the thing is, is, is Chris tried. It, it, the, he, he got yeah. his first chance at the table. What a break that is by half time. That's a cut break, by the way, and yeah. you look at the split that he's left. But, uh, but yeah, Chris came to the table with his first chance 
at the table at six nil down. Yep. Which was extraordinary. That's only because Brian Dry broke. Yeah. And then he he cleared two in a row, and he did that in about a minute and a half. Yeah. And you're thinking, for oh, I've he, looked at yeah because I looked he, at he the looks time. really sharp. I've looked <laughs> and I've just went right. You might think it's a long way back, but there's 26 or 27 minutes left. I looked and I thought, this is Brian's still going to have to go and win this. Like he, he yeah. can't he can't time. You can't clock manage here. He can't sort no. of. No, it was. Brian said that in his interview. He said, I, yeah. c- I couldn't overthink it because there was so much time in the yeah, match. No, that's I what just I mean. had to go it's and play the balls. It was, that, it was that one way early on that it was all. There, there was still plenty of time left. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I, I said this to Brian as well. I mean, I, I get on brilliantly with Chris. He's, he's a brilliant guy. And obviously. Oh, oh, oh no wow. way. No way, our oh, fan. Wow. No way. Yeah, like he is. Well, I'll come back to Brian at some point. He but is this judging is a little cannon, but if you look at where this yellow is and where the white goes and, and off, it's just a feather off of it, but you just had the funny feeling it was going... Like, look at the angle that goes in. Oh. <laughs> and that is massive, because like you say, he broke absolutely unbelievably there. I mean, <laughs> it's tough to feel, you know, too much sympathy with a player who sort of goes in off their own ball, but... I mean, to go in off at that yeah. angle, you can't legislate for that, can you? No. I mean, obviously, he'll, he'll still see it as a bad shot, in a sense, because I think it was this previous shot to land with that awkward, to have to play that awkward flick. But again, you're probably clutching the straws. John, it's just a little, little smirk here. He's not on, I mean, he'll fancy himself bought this, but from having ball in hand, he probably should have been better on this ball. He's fine. He's run again. Oh, wow. This, this is massive, this frame, though. Yeah, I just couldn't hold it, could he? This is, like, the thing is, this should be fine here, but the yellow on the right-hand side plays so big, in a sense that he can hide behind it, he can flick off and go near the middle, he can flick off at low, go down the ways. This is awkward. Yes, it is. He's, I mean, he is very good at these sort of meticulous shots. Almost wonder if he, if he can find a line where he maybe goes a couple of cushions, but I don't think he's thin enough for no, it. No, I think he has to... He has to I think he's going to try and go below the yellow and and sort of soft screw it. But he has to play really well here. He's not got enough. No. Oh, he is playing what you'd said, yeah. This is crazy. From having ball in hand with four very gettable balls, he's, oh, he's right down to play it. He must be totally comfortable on it on top. I, I like, I like this from John, you know. Yeah, I think the Q, yeah, because the more you think about it, the more annoyed you would get but not finishing it. But I'll tell you what, Good one shot. ball pot, and I don't really think there's a lot of guys that would pick over him. Like, he's just a cool customer. Right. I mean, he just... And there's a bit of daylight now. Yeah, has he, serve. yeah has he broke the back of the match as well? 5-2. Two, two from victory. Still 22. Well, basically 23 minutes to go. That cue ball was tracking in. It's that been dry. diverted away, but it is dry and Arfan comes back. Yeah, that is a relief for Arfan. Because if the... Ye- yeah, these yell. I mean, the reds are obviously okay as well, but... These yellows are really good and they link up really well because the one that's looks like it's sort of hampered with, with the reds near the the left centre probably plays as a good ball, yeah, you know, if he beats that one. Because you can see there's a little sort of nudging beyond that yellow. Yeah, these should be gone very quickly from Arthur, which is a relief because he's had to work for a few of his finishes. Yeah, the two yellows to the left of the cue ball now are the awkward ones, but yeah, they, they link up quite nicely. Yeah, I think he could. He can either sort of play a soft nudge or he could completely move the, the red that sort of needs his hand now. He can move that out of the way. In fact, he can just screw back and leave the gap and yeah. not have to worry about anything that I've just discussed there, actually. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Yeah, he's played so that It's a strange well. one. Off the back of what you were saying there, actually, I was going to ask you. So, um, w- when you say, obviously, players can sort of be their own worst enemy and they dwell over it. I was having a bit of debate with, with someone yesterday when I was watching Cole. Now, inevitably, Cole is alone in the way that he re- reacts to things, right? Yes. He, he is one of he, one, that he, Oh, it's a, it's a, He's so animated, obviously, and, and he's a great mate of mine as well. But it's interesting, right? I said, do you think that more often than not it helps or hinders him being as animated as he is it's strange like I don't know I feel like he wouldn't be as good of a player if he was do you know what I mean if he was half as sort of buzzed up and whatever like I mean obviously he's it's very fitting that he's he's nicknamed Chaos but he, he was he was playing against our fan and it's he's, he's, he's flying because he's annoyed about something then the next thing he's annoyed about something he misses a ball and then it's just it's, it's just a roller coaster watching him do you know what I mean being animated or because of um, sort of um, what I'm looking for here, sort of reacting with any, anything that was going on round about or anything like that. He wasn't to do with any of that. He wasn't interacting with anyone. He was just within himself and he missed something. But 
And to get to that stage, he played a couple of unbelievable shots that I feel like only he would have played. Do you know what I mean? So it does help him and hinder him at the same time. It's just a strange one. The balance has just got to be there. Yeah, and well, put it put it this way, Mark. I would look at this break here. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. It? I mean, look at the red there. Yeah. The I'm happy to get a ball off the break, and he's putting two balls in that centre pocket every single time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, look at these reds as well. I feel like if this red goes bottom left easily, then these could be away again as well. And no, well, he's looking a little bit, so he must feel like he's got a bit of a dilemma between the two of them. Well, I just wonder if he. I don't know if he's on the red down to the top left as we look now. Mm -hmm. Now, whether the with yellow the, hides enough, it, because I think angle. he, because yeah. I think he'll want to save the red near the eight ball for his last ball. Yeah, yeah. I just don't know if he has, enough, yeah, he has enough angle here to drop on the one on the bottom cushion. He would just need to go back to the. <coughs> oh, that was oh, close. He's up. Oh, is that why he said it? So, oh my god, is that time wise? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's been called. I think the time foul has been passed. I don't think the referee's think, called yeah, anything. Think, but I think um, that was his worry. Is that why he's ended up hitting it so much pace because he was running up a little time there? Yeah. But I mean, possibly. But he, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, he took his time. He was down on the shot for about three beeps. Yeah. That was a strange one. That was strange, Foul's yeah. not been called by, by Rob Wilkinson out there, so it's uh, it's just as you were for John. And well, he, he can still, it's still open table. Yeah, in a funny way, if the red on the bottom rail doesn't go, it's now, do you know what I mean? It, it isn't actually as easy as it first appears because he has to sort of come back to this. But you, nonetheless, he'll be absolutely delighted to be back at the table. Yeah, that let alone be back at the table with open table. I mean, that could be an enormous moment in this match. Because it's on our fans' break as well. That might be yeah, the last and shot that our fans played in the match. And again from a, an unbelievable break as well. So, yeah, I find I'll be a bit frustrated. But we obviously, we say that he doesn't really sort of show it. But, he, uh, do you know what I mean? Inside, he will be feeling oh, he'll be really annoyed that, himself. Yeah. He's had two or three chances that he should have put away. And whether he's ended up getting back and winning the frame or not, he'll just be thinking, do you know what I mean? At this stage of the game, like, I should be... Big I need to be taking all my chances. So big shot here, Mark. He's looking at Karen and the yellow full in the face. This isn't easy at all, Bridgen. No, it's just take the paint off it. So Arfan breathes again. Oh, it's not and easy on yellows. Though. Yeah, he's absolutely perfect to sort of bring this hard one out while he's still got options. Or I would say play the one over the left middle. Well, yellows are much easier now than they were at yeah. the start. That's for sure. He can just play this and sort of double kiss it out, and no matter where the cue ball goes, he's going to be on one of the bottom two. Yeah. So. Yeah, he just needs to mind his work, and again, he can, hopefully, for his sake, he can just erase it and just pretend like he took these out in the first visit, but it's easier said than done, of course. So, Jimmy Croxton currently has just gone 5-3 down to Rob Warren. Last 16 still taking shape on tables two and three over the next couple of matches. We'll still have three more to, to get through. So Brian Halker, Dom Cooney, still saying nil-nil on my life scoring, but I have a feeling that match has been underway for a little while now, so don't take my word on that one. This could be the polar opposite to Brian's last match. <laughs> First frames lasted as long as it took him to 6 0 up against. Well, my favourite, my absolute favourite statistic about Brian Halcrow is he is statistically the quickest and slowest player in the world. He owns the quickest six red shootout and he owns the slowest frame. It's unbelievable. Because quite a similar tag at one point um, applied to Scott Gillespie as well, didn't it? He, was, he had the fastest six red and the slowest six red all in one. Yes, he did, yeah. Until it got beaten, yeah. So I can tell you it's 1-0 to Dom Cooney in that match, but they have played over 10 minutes in it, so it has been a bit of a slow start for the pair of them. I think both of them will be hoping to sort of get up to speed in the next uh, few frames or so. Challenger Series and Women's Series got underway today as well, and we'll be bringing you the conclusion of those events Oh, that's oh, has he missed it? That's oh. drifted a little bit, I think, towards the end. Oh, it's went over a finger mark or something, I think. But he did stay down, so he knew it was sort of... It, it was in doubt whether it was going in or not. Mm. Um, you could sort of see he stayed down a little bit, but yeah. And it goes off, and Dad needed to win that frame, and he yeah. has. He's played it really well to, to control that and stay on the block. She's unseeded in the Women's Pro Series this yeah, year. Yeah, that's dangerous. And uh, do you know who she got in round two? Harriet, first round. What I love about Marion, though, is she won't care about that. No, she won't. <laughs> yeah, our opponents will actually probably feel more yeah, happy about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's another one of these frames where there's uh, the eight balls gone over the pocket and a couple of balls have gone round it. John's hit these unbelievable as well. 
Uh, Yellow's just come down here and nudged the red a little bit for safer. Well, it does that red past the eight ball. Again, it's another one where the eight ball's gone really close to going yeah. in, but not dropped, and it's probably caused a little bit of, of carnage for that. Just to uh, complete the, uh, the round-ups, by the way, in the prelim for Pro Series 2, which has begun, played concurrently over the next couple of days. Uh, we've got Andy Williams on the hill against Gary Clark, 6-5. Our friend Cole Bedford, 4-4 against the big dog Pete Mullaney. And uh, Adam Basu is currently 3-0 up against Callum Singleton. Yeah, so John's sort of opted for what I think I would have done as well here. I would have been leaving the red that's sort of it's sort of nearest the blue spot, if you, if you may, and he's going to try and play that down by the eight ball to open up the pocket, unless that red goes easier than we think. So we'll be able to tell here he's going to try and judge a cannon off the shallow. So he's not going to be able to leave it now anyway, so he's going to have to hope that the red does go. Yeah, the red must go by the eight ball. It really does look tricky from here, doesn't it, on, on, our, on our camera, but... So we'll find, yeah, so he's pointing at where to... Well, he's looking to play off the eight ball, I yeah. think. So it's cushion off the eight ball. He's just l looking to see where the eight ball yeah, will go. Yeah, so I think, do you think he'll play it now so, he'd, so he doesn't have to hope that the eight balls... Do you know what I mean? If he plays, if he leaves it till his last ball, he's then going to have to control the white and control the eight as well as get the red. Whereas I think if he tried to play it now, well, he's not anyway, unless he's leaving the one top left as an option. Could leave that as your fail safe, couldn't you? Yeah. So yeah. So here he doesn't have to. Obviously, he doesn't want the eight ball going safe, but he wants to be able to play the, at least play the cue ball onto his next shot rather than hope for where the next one lands. Yeah, and I think anywhere on the right side of the table is a rough sort of. I mean, he's got a huge area to land the cue ball yeah. in to be on that red to the top left, and he also doesn't really want to play as well a lot of pace. So that's what he'll be mindful as well. He, he is like you say, he's just going to have to. Yeah, it's fine. And he would have been well. fine on the eight ball there, but it's it's still was guaranteed to be on this red from where he was playing the way. Yeah, and it was important to my point about landing on the right side of the table because now he can track down nicely yeah. for the eight ball. It was a well-worked-out pattern again from John McAllister there. He played really, really well in this match. Yeah, he just plays them shots really well. He just floats them. I just love the way he sort of cues them. Doesn't lash at them. He, doesn't, he just times it. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lovely cue, actually. Yeah, he does. He? It's really relaxed. Like yeah. Just really natural. Never, never looks like he's trying too hard. Yeah. And, yeah, just really Great. smooth. I mean, there's a lot of players like that will get to the stage where they've they've had lots of deep runs, a lot of finals, a lot of semi-finals, and they think, do you know what I mean? Is it ever going to happen? And do you know what I mean? They've got to believe that it is going to accept that on that one. But um, but they've, they've just got to you've just got to plug away, like you say. It's just until you win that one, it's still an if rather than a when. So yeah, agreed. So what are you doing here, Mark? bottom uh, of the table is, is yeah, not nice. Uh, uh, this is one of these ones where you actually don't want to be the one who's chasing any finish first. You're happy to be the one going second when the table is a little clearer. Yeah, that's a good shot. Still a lot of work to do though. Yeah, what do you... I mean, can like you maybe look at playing one of the reds near the left middle off the red? Yeah, it's just... I don't know how he can attack the one... Yeah, so, he's, yeah, so he is actually reeling in a little bit here, which is good because... I think it, mm, he's a, well. That's a bit of a nothing one, actually. Yeah, because John's only one. not covered one, any of the yellows. John's only one cannon or one good position away from winning the frame. All the yellows go. So, yeah, it was a bit of a loose one. I feel like that was a bit of a frustrated one, though. I think actually in normal in normal situation, and you weren't reading the score line, maybe at nil nil. I feel like our fan would have maybe even not gone for reds at all. Like he would have maybe just sort of put a little safety and just said to John, on you go, you have a go you have a stab at them. But I think he maybe thought, you know, and maybe need to make something happen here. John's not making mistakes, I'm I gonna need to make something sort of I think that was the feeling for sure. I think that was absolutely the decision taken. Is it a decision he will come to regret? See what John's. Mm. 
Yeah, I think our fan will be the one that's quite happy that Johnson are going for these because I think they're less, unless the yellow on the bottom cushion will track in off the red. We'll see here when he lands in behind it. Yeah, so I think a delicate one here off the cushion off the red, free the yellow, and he'll have the angle to track back up for the last ball. Oh, this is this is match ball. It feels like yeah. Get this one right, and then the next shot plays itself, and then you've just got to mind your work, really. No surprise, see John Corey's extension. This is the shot. All comes down to this. He's played so well in this match. Yeah, I don't think there's a major margin for error either. I think it's he does need to play it sort of. Yeah, like it doesn't. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Really well. brilliant. Yep. Well, if this is to be the moment for John, he has played so well in this match. It's the goal, yeah. See, it's, it's almost the only thing that's caught him out. He's played three yeah. of those shots now. Yeah, it's kind of like you say, the nothing for short as well. It's um. He, he could have, he could have been four feet long. I think it's maybe just to do with I I don't know as so well the table's all sort of played a bit different. But if he isn't used to the sort of the speed and the cushions and and whatnot, but I think that's one there you would err on the side of hitting it, over hitting it. It's oh, that nice and he might still a shot. For, mm, He's a bit in between, isn't he? Yeah, that's what he's that that hand gesture was. I'd rather have been a foot short or a foot more. But I love this. He's straight down on it. Yeah, no messing about. Oh, and Bang! Yeah, yeah. John McAllister, what a finish! Yeah.